Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I'm just in the house at the moment, on the laptop. So th this project that I'm on with now, I'm using it as a bit of a training exercise on how to draw things in 3D. Well, I've never drawn a full project in 3D before. So I'll show you what I've got drawn so far and what I'm doing. And then we'll go out into the workshop and get it built up to the stage that I've got it designed to. Right, so this is a project that I'm on with. It's a log splitter that I'm making for our own use on the farm to process our own firewood. I already We already have this big lump of beam and we already have the hydraulic ram. So I've got the hydraulic ram drawn with the right amount of travel of what the real ram has. Um, it's going to be tractor mounted on a three point linkage. So I've got the headstock drawn. So these are the bottom link and your bottom link pins, top link pin and then your ram mounts onto there as well. Um, I've got the bracing drawn. Yes, yeah, so it's nothing complicated, but it's sort of a good thing for me to learn from. So, yeah, that's what I've got drawn so far. And the blade on the end, I'm not sure whether I make a removable one so I can, you know, with wings coming off it so you can cut the log into four, or whether you just leave it like that, split into two. But anyway, we'll work that out later. So, I'm getting pretty bored of looking at the computer screen now, so I'm going to go and build it to this stage. And then once I've got it built up to this stage, then I'll come back in and redesign, you know, finish off designing it, building it. So I've got them parts put into sheet cam, allow you lead in and lead outs. Um, and this'll this program will make the program that the CNC machine follows and write the program. So write the file. So yeah, we'll save this onto the USB stick and then we can go and cut these bits out. Yeah, so this is what I've got so far. So there's a ram sat on there and then the big lump of beam. So it's a decent sized ram. It's 75 mil rod. Well, I think it's actually a three inch rod. And then that's like 185 mil outside diameter. So yeah, she's a big beefy ram. Um, I think it's pretty much brand new. It came from a farm sale for not a lot of money, but the rod is perfect. And when you look in the bushes, it doesn't look like it's ever had a pin through there. So. I think it's brand new. Then this big lump of beam probably doesn't need to be as big as that, but it came from the scrapyard. Just obviously someone's off cut. It's 210 mil wide and 530 mil tall. So it's a big lump of steel. Right, so we've got a bit of plate on. I'm gonna cut them out 15 mil. Got my file saved with my USB stick. So I'll load that in. Right, so that's that loaded in. We'll bring the torch across, get it lined up, do a test run, make sure it's all right, and then we can cut them out.
Right, so that's all them bits cut out and cleaned up. So there's these holes, they're slightly undersized. So I'm going to bar them back through to two inch and a quarter, I think the pins are. These bits, they looked all right on the computer, but they look a bit big and chunky now. But yeah, they'll be all right. So yeah, I'll tack these together and then bar them holes through. The rest, it won't matter about that hole because it's only a top link pin. They're always oversized anyway. And then it won't matter about that one because that's just where the tube goes through. So yeah, that, that's the only sort of important one. I'm going to bar them through now rather than rather than welding them on and then line boring them through because it's you know it's a lot of time setting up line boring pins through when I can just do them as they are now because it, it doesn't really matter for this job. You know I can tack them on, put the pin through through the ram, straighten the ram up to where I want it, and then weld these plates on. Right, so I've got this sat on the milling machine now. And I've got the boring head in, and I've just eyeballed it round. What I wanted to do was I wanted to set it off this edge with the edge finder and then move it across so I knew that the hole centre was bang on what it was supposed to be on the computer. But no matter how I set it up on the mill, I just I can't get it to fit. You know, it touches there, but then it, then this is running into that, or the other way around, that's running into there or whatever. So yeah, I just can't do it. So I've just just had to eyeball it and give it a bit of a run round. I think it's equal all the way around. So I should have cut them out a little bit smaller and then I had more to cut out. But there they are. See, see what it's like. It needs to be inch and, two inch and a quarter. So I've been through that now with a boring head. So I've just made a bit of a balls up when I plasmaed them out. So I plasmaed them out too big. So there's a bit there that's not machined. You know, it's slightly too big, but I'm committed now. I think for a log splitter, it'll be fine. It won't matter. It won't matter in the slightest, really. So yeah, I'll take them off now. I could do with either making a pin or getting a bit of a pin the right size, and then I can tack these onto the onto the beam. Right, so I can't do anything more with them plates at the moment because I haven't got any pin the right size to go through there. So I have some bigger stuff that I can machine down, but I'm just going to wait to see if I can get any of the right size. So I can get on with these now. <laughs> so I can cut the tube that these go through. Obviously I can weld two on, but I can't weld the other two on, otherwise they won't won't fit through there. So this is the leftover bit of tube that I had from when I made them bag lifters. So I chop it off the right length.
Right, so I've got them welded round. Um, every time I weld round something freehand, someone always comments saying, oh, you need a rotary welding table. So I had this before I made it for when I did some wheel centers. It's just it's like an old bolt-on hub. So I'll just have it on there, made it a little bit easier. See, obviously I can't weld the other end on because that tube slides through there. So that's that bit done for now. Right, so I've got some two inch and a quarter round band now. So that fits nicely into that hole that I've um, bored through. So I can separate them plates and then I can use this pin to align everything. And I can start tacking them onto there and welding them on. Right, so I've got that sat on there, the pin through, but I think what I need to do first before I tack these on is I need to put all the bracing in, weld all the bracing in first, because if I tack these on and then weld the bracing in, it'll probably pull it out of line and then the pin won't fit. So yeah, I'll take this back off again, tip it on its side, put all my bracing in, so there'll be a 100 by 12 flat to go down there, another one there, and then I'm going to put an angle piece in as well, brace it up as much as I can. Obviously, it'd have been better if that was longer, but I didn't want to use a great load of steel, so yeah, I'll, I'll uh, use less steel but brace it up more. And I think because of the depth of the bit of beam, you know, I think it'd be still plenty strong enough. So yeah, I'll uh, take that off and do that now. So I've got them braces cut, welded, well, tacked in, so that's 100 by 12 
then I'll do the same at the other side and then I'm also going to put a, a, a bit on its edge like that or on the diagonal from there to there so that should box that in and strengthen all that lot up so I'm going to weld all that round now Right, so I've got them welded in and I've got an extra bit welded in there so that should give me a nice strong base to weld the other bits on but that's going to be the top so I'll turn it back the right way up now I've still got them bits to weld in and then I can start putting the top plates on and same for the other side obviously
Right, so I've got a bit carried away on myself. I've started putting it together and I've forgotten that I need to press these in over because obviously that gap in there is too wide for the top link. So what I'm going to do is press there somewhere and then same on the other side. So then that'll come up like that and then up. So then the gap will only be 55, 60 mil wide. Right, so I think I've got it all tacked on where it needs to be. It was a bit awkward because the ram just kept rolling about. So I've tacked some bits of box up the side and then clamped it with a bit of spacer in. So that's parallel with that. Um, got a bit tacked on there just to keep that keep that um, same distance. So that bottom tube's tacked in as well. And then these plates are tacked onto the beam. So I think I can take the ram out now and then start welding all this lot together. Right, so I think I'm happy with this now. It all seems square and in the right place. Um, so I've got it tacked around that tube. I haven't got them put on yet, but I'll do that once I've got this welded up. So I've got a bit of box welded on the top, a bit of box welded on there. I've got these extra braces in here. So I'm hoping now that I can weld around this. It won't move too much. Obviously it'll move a little bit, but pin nice fit at the moment. So yeah, I'll start welding this round now. And then, uh, well, because of how, how wide the ram is, these have had to overlap off the side a little bit. So once I've welded round the inside, I'll tip it on each side and then 
whale that across. Right, so I've got all that welded round, so I've put three runs of weld round down the sides. I didn't see the point in going all the way to the middle with it, so I've just gone, yeah, wrapped the corners and gone to there. That bit I had to gouge back out again because it, it was, went all bubbly, so I've gouged that back out and redone that. Same in there, and then pinned still nice and free. So we'll turn it on its side now and weld up the other bits. So while it's still this way up, I've just clamped a bit of box section across the bottom so then I can line these up where they need to be. So, um, and then when I tip it on its side, I can weld them around. Just thought it'd be easier doing them now and then gravity's not making them slide on or off.
Right, so I put three runs of weld down there. Three runs around them. Welded around them. And the pin still turns. It's a bit tighter, but it still turns. So I'll turn it over the other way and do the same on the other side. Right, so it's back the right way up again now, so that's all welded round. I've welded a bit extra in there to stop that splaying out, and I've taken that bit of box off the top. Um, just goes to show how much heat pulls things, because before I welded the other side up, that pin had gone tight, and now it's slack again. So hopefully when I chop that box off, it'll still be slack. Right, so I've chopped that off. Spot on, is that? Yeah, pleased with that. So I'm going to sit the round back in, and then I can use that to see whatever everything else I need to design. Right, so that's the end done, the ram back on again. So I'm going to make a clamp or something to, to hold that end of the ram rigid. So I could use them bolt holes, but I don't think it'd be strong enough. Well, it probably would be strong enough, but I want something better. You know, I'm going to make something better to hold the ram all the way around. So I could do with getting the ram piped up as well. So then I know, I ain't quite sure how far the ram goes in, because it, it had a load of tape around it, but when you look you can see a line there, so it looks like that's maybe the end of the travel. And then uh, if I can push it all the way out, then I know what I'm doing at this end as well. So I think that'll do for part one, because I've got some other jobs coming that need doing. And I say I've got some more designing to do on this yet, to know what I'm doing at this end. So yeah, hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.